why do we why do we bring worship why do we bring the word of god why do we preach on television why do we still preach the gospel for two reasons for one reason is for the unbelievers for them to have a chance to know who god is and second reason for the believers to be encouraged and to continue to walk with God. Is that right? There's no entertainment involved here. There's no, it's, it, it's not just a, a television program or a service. No, there's two reasons that we do this for, and this is why God has called us to do this. Every preacher has the same mandate. And as long as we are going to be in this world, we all need to continue to hear the word of God. And that's why people are looking for place and churches where they can be fed by the Spirit. Why? Because the Spirit of God is leading you because you are a son or a child of God. But you're not really completely following the lead of the Spirit because you cannot do that by yourself. And God knows that. Otherwise, He would never give Paul to write so many letters with warnings and instruction to the church. Do you see the difference? We are all led by the Spirit of God, but we are not really following the way God wants us to follow so that we may not fall. And here's the problem with a lot of believers whom God gave a chance to be born again and to be led by the Spirit. Pride grab hold of them and they don't come to church any longer because it seems like they cannot find any church. That's a lie. And that's where the devil is trapping them knowing that by themselves they are finished. Amen. It's a lie of the devil that people can stay home and grow by themselves and think that they can achieve things. No, God knows that we are too weak without leaders, without help, without being amongst believers. What did Adam say today? Psalm 133. How good and pleasant it is for brethren, for brethren to dwell together in unity. Why? It strengthens us. Strengthen the body. It helps. We are all led by the Spirit. But are we following the Spirit? That's another question. So you can be born again 155 times. But if you're not following the Spirit, you can die. That's the trap of the devil. You know how many people I know personally? That used to come to church, then they stopped, that there was just television, and then there's more television. They got discouraged, they got so frustrated because there was no answers. They were fighting and fighting, and then they gave up and went back into the world because one in the f uh, 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 war field is not a warrior. All by yourself, you cannot fight. You with me? Remember this. Remember this. It's very, very important. Even though God has given us that new life, new way of life, God has given and installed in us the way of the Spirit, as the Bible says, the law of the Spirit of life in Christ. That's a gift. But what we're doing with the gift, it's up to us. If we have received the gift, it doesn't mean <laughs> we will use it properly. All right? It doesn't mean. Now, verse 15 says this, For you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again, 
to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. So again, God is explaining that we did not receive the spirit of fear. That's the next example I want to say or bring. We have received the spirit of adoption by whom we cry to God, Abba, Father, because the spirit of God is dwelling inside of us. And what happens if you walk in in fear? What happens if you still walk in in fear? God says we did not receive the spirit of fear. But what happens if you're still walking in fear? It means that you need to do something about it. Amen? We did not receive the spirit of fear. We have received the law of the spirit in Christ Jesus. As it says in 1 Corinthians that... We have received all the gifts. We have no shirt of any. So why is the problem? What is the problem? Previous verse says, For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. The Spirit of God is already leading you. God has given us an opportunity to be led by the Spirit to be influenced by the power of the Spirit in our life under one condition. If we will work with God. You listening? Under one condition, if we will work with God in that area, in each area, if we will work with God. We did not receive the spirit of fear. So if you, have, if you are fearful, if you have some concerns, if you have some things in your life, first and foremost, as the Bible says, you rem remember one thing, that God is always uh, girding your mind toward himself. Your mind is set on God. We already discussed about that. You're not in a world that your mind will be just uh, set on the world and have the hopes of, of, of the world. Is that right? This is why you're born again and you begin to see better and further to what? To deal with your fears. Why did God give you the spirit so that you or the, so that your mind would be set on the things of God? Is that you may see with the eyes of the spirit that God has hope for you and a future and the power to deal with things. So when you are setting your mind on the things of the Spirit as the Spirit is leading you, if you will allow the Spirit of God, amen, the Spirit of God is trying to put your mind on God and trying to show you things. And if you will allow the Spirit of God to deal with these things, by opening your eyes, by believing God, by trusting God, by seeing things, what God is showing, by having hope, the fear is going to be dissolved. By the power of the Spirit. But God cannot dissolve that fear out of your life as long as you look in, into your situation with your own eyes. God has given you two choices. The way of the Spirit, the law of the Spirit in Christ in you. You can look through the eyes of the Spirit, and yet you can look through your own eyes. Then, you're not going to be able to do it. 
you wouldn't be able to make it if you're going to be looking with your own eyes at these things because God did not give us the spirit of fear. God is leading us by His Spirit as the children. And if we're going to look and follow the Spirit of the Lord and be encouraged and listen to the Word of God and be built up and look into the future with the eyes of God, then fear is going to be disappeared. Not only fear, that's the way God deals with our life in every situation. I know people, some people, they've been in a ministry for so long. They may be not even in a ministry, but they're sitting in churches. Some Christians, believers, that they so long are being born again. And yet, they still doing things in the flesh when it comes to personal life. Don't. Don't think I'm perfect. We all like that in some areas. But as you see, and as you say that from a side, you can see it better. You understand? Why is it that we can preach and we can talk and we can encourage each other that God is good and God can do things and God is all faithful and God is so glorious when it comes to our own personal life, we backing off. Why? I'll tell you why. It's a natural thing to do. Because in our head, we know what the Word of God says. Is that right? We know the Scriptures very well. So if somebody is in trouble, we could right away shout the Scripture into that man or woman. Say, that's what God says. Don't worry. It's okay. It's good enough. Thanks. We know what the Bible says, but when it comes to us, because our eyes are not set on the things what we say, we're not using it ourselves. You following me? Yeah. I can preach the gospel to you all my life, but if I'm not going to deal in my own life with things, I can encourage you not because I live by it, but, but because what the Word of God says. Amen. But when it comes to myself, I may be afraid, back off, or do something different. Why? It's because it's the same principle. It's the same principle. It's the Spirit of God who is teaching us and leading us and showing us and guiding us if we will allow them. Amen. Verse 16 says, The Spirit Himself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. Verse 17, And if children the heirs, then heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed. There we go. So, as you can see the progress from the beginning, it starts like, that's wonderful. We have the Spirit of God. It's the power. It's, uh, it's the law of the Spirit in Christ is in our life. And so on and on and on. We get encouraged. We get encouraged. Oh, those who are led by the Spirit, they are the children of God. It's a wonderful promise. It's a wonderful thing. Those who are led by the Spirit, we cry, Abba, Father. Glorious thing. Amen. And so on and on and on. The Spirit of God bears witness to you that you are the child. I mean, what else do we need to believe and follow God? There's one thing that is missing. Practical trust. Following me? Practical trust. Practical trust. This is all confession. We believe. We are excited knowing that God is dwelling. And you know what? God knows that He is dwelling in us. We know that God is dwelling in us. What we missing is the practical trust. Practical application to everything what God says. He says, if you know 
that the force of the Spirit is in your life, that the law of the Spirit in Christ is in your life. If you know that you are the Son of God and you are being led by my Spirit, God says, if you know that the Spirit bears witness that you are the child of God, and if you know that God did not give you the spirit of fear, so why are you afraid? So why are you afraid? It's the training that we're missing. Training, amen. We need to be trained. We need to put things in practice. We need to trust God and overcome things in our life. We need to believe and allow the Spirit of God to deal with us in each and every point. And again, I tell you again, it cannot be done by yourself at home alone. Everybody needs supervision. Anybody, everybody needs help. Everybody needs encouragement. That's how we grow. Hallelujah. Look honestly what it says here further. In verse 17, and if children, we are the heirs. It's even greater promise. The heirs of God, so everything, can you imagine to be an heir of God? What God has, it's all yours and so on and on. It's a wonderful thing. It's a God has given us everything. We have. And join heirs with Christ. And then we stop here. And then it says, If indeed we suffer with him, that we may be glorified with him. We forget about this thing. What suffer? What are we talking about here? You see, up to this point of time, and up to this point in the Bible, everything was just looking so good all the promises that God has given and we quite often think that every promise that God has given to us we can use at any time we can proclaim and believe and this as long it doesn't bother us to do anything beyond as long it doesn't require anything but it is that's where the problem is with in many minds of people. By the way, do you know that the church today is not a popular place? It never been and it never should be. The hockey arena may be a popular place. Are you following me? Anything else that the world is build, building and build it successfully and bring a lot of people in entertainment, it could be a popular place. But the church is not a popular place. It has never been built to be a popular place. Why? Because nobody wants to be corrected. Nobody wants to know the truth, to live by it. But it's the only place where you're safe from everything in this life and in this world, in Christ. Amen? The popularity of the church, we are not supposed to be popular. No man who serves the gospel, he cannot... If he is popular, there's something's wrong. There's something's wrong. Because as long as as soon as we're gonna begin to preach the real gospel and speak to people exactly how it is, to help them out, not to fall, you're not gonna become popular any longer. 
because that's the way it is. Jesus himself, his fame went all over Israel. Is, do you know why? Because of his healing ministry. But the rate of people following him went low down after he began to preach the gospel. You follow me? The rate of his followers went down after he began to speak and rebuke and teach and tell people what God is looking for. No. His popularity went down. And by the way, when he was going with the cross on Golgotha, when he was at his last day, he was not popular at all. People were mocking him and laughing at him as a loser. You, you listening? So what kind of popularity Jesus had? He was not looking to be popular. No. He came, he says, I came to do the will of the Father. Well, thank you for watching today's telecast. We are in Romans 8, part 1. Next week, we're going to move on with this chapter and uh, continue to learn what God is really talking about to us through Romans chapter 8. It's a powerful chapter. Actually, you can look from any angle at this chapter and get a wonderful, powerful revelation on the Holy Spirit, on the work of God in your life, and many other things. And also, as we're talking about, well, uh, next week we're going to be talking about what does it really mean suffering? Suffering, I mean, if you suffer with Him, you should be glorified. We will see what God is really talking about. Amen. And today I just want to uh, um, I speak to you about our upcoming miracle meetings. Toronto, October 14th and 15th, Friday night at 7 p.m., Saturday night at 6 p.m. We will be there for our miracle meetings, two miracle meetings. And I remember a lot of people were calling me and asking me, when are you coming to Toronto? When are you coming to Toronto? Well, we are coming to Toronto in October. So those who call us, I just expect you to be there because you were really anxious for us to come. And I believe that you will come. So that's your opportunity. And I believe together we will see the power of God moving really, really powerfully and gratefully. Amen. God is so good. And also, before I'm going to pray for you, I want to mention about this as well. A friend of mine, Ken McGee from Winnipeg, he is organizing a, a, a Israel with Love Bible Land Israel tour. Remember, next year, 2017, is going to be Israel's 50th year since liberation of Jerusalem. That will be a significant year for the Lord and for the people of Israel. So, if you would like to go with him, it's a great price. You have to discuss about that price with him. But to me, it's a great price. And you can fly out of Winnipeg or Toronto. You can discuss about that with him as well. And if you would like to go, uh, you have to give him a call. So you need to get a hold of him. And here's his phone number, 204-942-5433. It's Ken McGee, 204-942-5433. Give him a call today. and request your seat or whatever how, how the procedure is just speak to him about that now I want to pray for you and believe God for your miracle trust in the Lord for everything he will do for you today thank you precious Jesus I just uplift everyone who is watching right now in the name of Jesus I give you the praise and I thank you for your goodness thank you for your mercy thank you for the touch of the spirit upon their life Lord I just give you the praise and I thank you for your faithfulness and glory and goodness over the life Lord just touch their lives fill them with the Holy Spirit give them victory over every issue Heal every sickness and disease as people are going through. Touch their lives and give them all the victories that they need. Give them a breakthrough, a financial breakthrough, my Lord. Touch them, Lord. Give them victory over their enemies. Give them victory in their families. Give them victory over their jobs and everything that we pray. Oh God, I believe and I thank you and I trust you for every person that will receive a miracle today. 
through the mighty name of Yeshua Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. And some of the shoulder will be dislocated, left shoulder. And I believe it's left shoulder, and God is healing your shoulder right now. In Jesus' name, we'll be coming to the end of this program. If you need an additional prayer, give us a call. We'll pray with you and continue to believe God for a miracle. There's a lot of phone calls coming in. So it's uh, sometimes our phone line is just jammed, and we cannot answer every phone call as you you calling us. So please leave us a message. And I try to get back to everybody who leaves a message. I try and try to do my best. So I trust the Lord that you will do that. So if you need a prayer or anything, just call us right now and we'll pray with you and believe God for your miracle. And again, thank you for watching our program and thank you for your support that we need so much each and every day. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord shines His face upon you. The Lord lift up His countenance upon you and give you His peace. Shalom. Be blessed until tomorrow. Bye-bye. I'm so glad that you're doing this and putting that in the book. I pray that God will use this book. I pray that God will give you right words for this. Lord, I pray for Brother Gilbert in the name of Jesus. I pray, my Lord God, that you will use this man for your glory. That it will be only for your glory and the Catholic Church will see through this book the light of the gospel of Jesus. And the anointing makes it. Oh, Jesus, my Lord, I thank you for the anointing. God bless you, brother. Father God, I just pray, just touch this man with your spirit in Jesus. Holy Spirit, fill him, touch him, bless him. In Jesus' name I pray. Hallelujah.